Um, hi, glad to see everybody. Uh, my name is Ted Glick. I uh, am um, a co-founder and a board member of the Climate Crisis Coalition. I'm also the policy director of the Chesapeake Climate Action Network. Um, I want to be concise uh, and allow time for um, interaction, which is always uh, the best part of these kind of sessions. Um, the election results, let me start with that. We're talking about building political will. And clearly our, heart, our job uh, has gotten harder as a result of what happens as re with the elections. But I think it's very important for us to be clear that th this, the, the results of the elections were not, uh, uh, pe people didn't vote primarily because of their positions on climate change and global warming. They voted primarily because of the really bad state of the economy. And people voted their pocketbooks and their anxieties and their fears and their difficulties in, in meeting the bills, not having a job, their house being foreclosed. All the polls show that, that overwhelmingly that was the issue. The election was not a referendum on climate change or on global warming. And to back that up, just a little bit of information, there was a, a poll that was done by uh, researchers at Yale and George Mason Universities. They actually had done one in January of this year and they did one in June of this year. And these are some of their results. Since January, public belief that global warming is happening rose four points to 61%, while belief that it is caused mostly by human activities rose three points to 50%. The number of Americans who worry about global warming rose three points to 53 percent. And the number of Americans who said that the issue is personally important to them rose five points to 63 percent. Americans who said President Obama and Congress should make developing sources of clean energy a high priority increased 11 points to 71 percent. And in a 7% increase since January, 69% of Americans said that the United States should make a large or medium effort to reduce global warming, even if it incurs large or moderate economic costs. So to me, there's no question that this, this, this uh, fits with my own daily experience as I interact with people. Um, big majorities of the American people um, get it, that global warming is happening. It's an issue that we have to do something about. Very, very large majorities across all the entire political spectrum support shifting to renewable energy, moving to clean energy sources, to wind, to solar, getting off fossil fuels. Um, that's the context of uh, the work we need to do. And that hasn't changed because of the election. What's happened, of course, with the election is that we have more people in, in office in Washington, D.C., who deny um, that global warming is happening or deny that humans um, are the primary drivers of global warming. We have a, a bigger obstacle, because we had a big obstacle in this Congress that's just ending anyway, right? We had a big obstacle anyway. We couldn't get a comprehensive climate legislation passed. So the obstacle is bigger, and, and this is what's very key. The power of big oil and the power of the coal industry um, is, is greater now over the government in Washington, D.C., but that existed before. That's existed for decades. That's the primary problem that we have to overcome, the power of oil and coal over our political process and our political system. So the question is, how do we do that? How do we do, go about the organizing that is going to get those over 60 percent of the American people um, who agree that global warming is happening and want to do something about it? How do we get them to become more active, more visible, more willing to speak up? Um, how do we develop more of a movement so that as a movement we're more visible? You know, like the, you know, the, the major movements in history in this country and, and in other parts of the world Change happens when a lot of things happen, but one of the keys is that you have to have people visible um, out in the streets, demonstrating, taking action, um, including in almost all cases, um, civil disobedience, nonviolent civil disobedience. That needs to be there if we're going to get the, the changes that are needed on this issue uh, for sure because of the, the, the seriousness of it and just the depth of it. Um, and that has been true in the past in terms of what's needed. So um, this is what I would see in terms of uh, this kind of new period that we're entering into. 
we have to go back to basics in many ways, or we have to, to, to kind of be more focused on, on a lot of the basics of organizing. Um, internet uh, organizing is great. The internet is a wonderful tool, tool, you know, email lists, all those things, it's great, it's wonderful. Um, but we need to be about face-to-face -face organizing. We need to be interacting with people. We need to be going doing, going door to door, doing canvassing. We need to be setting up tables on street corners um, with our literature and talking to people and getting them to sign up to, to be part of our organizations. Um, we, we, again, we have to be visible. We have to be out there. People have to see us. Um, that's, to me, just a fundamental. Um, a lot of our work, is, I think, is, is, has, is very much, in terms of, of good work that's going on, is very locally based, it's state based, it's people fighting to prevent new coal plants from being built or fighting to shut down existing coal plants. It's um, a, a growing movement along the East Coast. It's, it's fighting for the, the building of offshore wind, wind farms um, off the Atlantic coast or, or elsewhere. Um, in, in coastal areas in this country, fighting for wind farms uh, on land, fighting for, for, for solar plants, um, getting uh, uh, policies that encourage people to put solar panels on their roofs. Um, all of those things are very necessary, uh, ongoing work, day-to-day -day work. We also need, though, the, the, the national and the international connections. We need the, like the days of action, the 350.org, um, has organized so successfully over the last couple of years where thousands and thousands of places in the world see people um, taking action collectively. We need, though, we need to bring those forward. We need to look for opportunities for more of those kinds of kind of national, international expressions of the popular will, right? The popular will. Um, we need to be about uh, the urgency you know, uh, Jim Hansen talked about tipping points. That's very real. We need to be talking more about tipping points um, and talking about the, the necessity of the urgency of the issue driving um, more of us to take action, um, uh, pushing our, our federal government to take action, our state and local governments to take action. Um, we have to ha internalize the, this understanding of how urgent the situation is and not let that derail us, get us, you know, uh, hard to get up in the morning, but uh, to, to almost like light a, a fire, like a pilot light inside us that just won't get out. You know, it's what Bill McKibben said last night. Had that the picture of that young, young girl from the Maldives, um, and, and the predictions are, and it's very likely, that in 40 years, if not before, that young girl's going to be a refugee, a climate refugee, because the Maldives may, long, may no longer exist. They'll be underwater. We need to internalize what this issue is all about in terms of the, the future, and, and we need to live that out um, every day in the, w the way that we, we do our work. There's a, I'll, I'll wrap up actually on um, just this quote, because I'm, I'm checking the time. There's a um, German minister <coughs> who was active, who, who lived um, uh, uh, before and during World War II. His name was Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and he was active in the uh, German resistance to Hitler. Um, and he ended up being killed because of it. He was arrested. He was actually involved in an effort to, uh, to kill um, Adolf Hitler uh, as a way to end the war. He was a pacifist, uh, but he felt conditions were so desperate that that was something that was appropriate, and he was involved in this effort to, uh, to, to kill Adolf Hitler. Um, that didn't happen. Um, he was arrested. He was killed, and he, he, had a, he had many great things to say. One of them was this. Real generosity towards the future lies in giving all to the present. That's the way we have to live every day. Reach out to people, face-to-face -face organizing. Identify the issues where we are um, that people care about related to climate. Organize around them. Interact with the national and international campaigns and mobilizations that make sense, that are having an impact. Um, keep focused. Keep a focus on, on the federal government. Don't forget about them. Push them in terms of a price on carbon, pricing carbon, dividends, returning the money to the American people. Uh, to me, that's what I see as the ways forward. Thanks.